And now we'd like to welcome our beloved Warren Kess. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you, Joseph and Nick, for inviting me and for always hosting these wonderful, wonderful, uplifting meetings. And thank you, Ted, for alerting me last week of, um, of ability to speak to people about this month's uh, topic of acceptance. And um, when I when I first heard about it, the two prayers uh, came up for me that I've been used to hearing. And the first one was Psalm uh, 19, verse 40. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. And then, of course, the second one is the serenity prayer, which is, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. How beautiful and how appropriate. And that always reminds me and it brings me into the fact that one is divine and one has power. I am divine. You are divine. I have power. You have power. Acceptance has two sides. Being accepted and accepting others and things and events and you know, what comes before you. But I always felt along the way when things didn't quite go my way, I would say, or I was not accepting, I would say, Warren, get over it. And, and thinking, just move on being annoyed and all. That's where I was. But now we've got COVID to accept or not. So with COVID, I'm sure most of you have found new creative things to do. I did. And uh, I've become the uh, closet clean out, file clean out, and shredder king of New York and Watermill. So I've been doing a lot of that. And one of the things that was very interesting, I found a fifth anniversary card <clears throat> that James sent to me uh, back then. And uh, you'll see what I mean. So I hope, hopefully I can have you see it here. Let's see if I can get it up. Anyway, there's a fifth anniversary card. It's a cartoons and there are five uh, five points here. Let me just get this right here. Five stages. And uh, the first is denial. Second is uncertainty. The third is disbelief. Fourth is shock. And I'll hold back the fifth. But let me read the cartoon. So one, denial. The, they say to each other, the, the mates, we haven't been together that long. That's denial. Uncertainty. Have we really been together that long? Disbelief. I can't believe we've been together that long. And the fourth, shock. Ah, we've been together that long. And Jane's card to me then, and how appropriate now, the fifth one is acceptance. And the caption there is, okay, we've been, been together that long, but you know, it really doesn't seem like it's been that long at all. And that's how it felt with Jane. So now we've got COVID. How long are things going to take till we get back to normal? And will things ever get back to normal? We started out with lots of denial. 
it's not going to be so bad, it'll be okay, uh, I'm young, uh, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, it's not going to last that long. It's not that big a deal. We have a lot of anger and sadness in both the stages of grief and not accepting. It is non-acceptance. Then if we work hard enough and we're washing our hands and uh, really staying at home and not getting together with people, if we do enough, we'll be okay. We need to process the losses we've experienced. Loss of life, loss of connection, loss of security. Everything is changing and change is loss. Every day something occurs and something changes. The death toll grows, the stock market swings, storefronts are boarded up and companies shut down. More stay at home orders are issued and new losses keep happening. I was not accepting these as they were at the time. And then I had another issue. About seven years ago, I noticed some changes in Jane and about six plus years ago, we had her tested and she showed she was diagnosed for early stage Alzheimer's. That's six years ago. She was very good at not letting everybody know what was going on. You know, how wonderful she is and was doing that and embracing everybody. But I don't know if you've ever been a caregiver for this particular disease or know someone in the family or nearby. It is very difficult, both for the party with the illness and for the caregiver. I did very well for a while, but I thought Warren can handle it. I was not accepting it as a disease that was going to go on and on and on. I could handle it. I handle things in life. Good old Warren. It finally wore me down. Jane got a, you know, a little bit worse, maybe not as bad, but enough that I was out of control. I was not accepting it. I called in the cavalry, which is their family who now moved from New England to Fort Collins, Colorado. They flew in after making arrangements with me uh, to get an assisted living situation out there and furnished it. And flew Jane on February 5 out there with the intention of visiting her every day the family, and I would be out there every month flying out. Lockdown in March. Nobody can visit. She has no visitors. She has friends there, which she's, thank goodness, you may ask, she's very healthy and happy. But I thought I was failing Jane, taking care of Jane. I was not accepting it. It took a lot of meetings at support meetings to finally get that I was doing as many a very good job. But it took quite a while to allow myself to feel that. So I had COVID and I had Jane's situation. But Yes, I'm alone. I'm accepting it. Every day I accept it. I look around. If I start to go the other way, I start to use as a device finding gratitude. Gratitude for the smallest thing. The smallest thing I could find that is around me, that occurs to me, that I think of, or in the world. And then I can accept where I am. Also recognizing 
and these normal feelings help. Talking to God helps. Talking to people and finding they are also experiencing similar feelings helps. Just saying I'm okay and that this is okay and when it's really not okay is a lie and I'm just fooling myself. This is what acceptance is all about. It's about telling the truth and owning it. So now I can say, Warren, get over it and move on, but not do it in anger. I can do it because I accept where I am. I accept what is provided for me in front of me as best I can. I'm not perfect, as we all know. And yes, I'll find that relief when you accept the things you cannot change. And don't worry in times like these, that's not wasteful. And remember one thing even more important in there, nothing can steal your laughter. Thank you. Thank you, Warren.